we've got this uh, this lady drove into the uh, area that's flooded out, and uh, she's screaming right now. I just called 911. Fire department is coming in, but uh, she drove right into the flood waters. This is the Peachtree Creek, and it is rising at the moment. So that's just one of the many horrific scenes we saw play out this weekend as Hurricane Helene battered the southeast, killing nearly 100 so far and causing massive damage. And I say so far because as I'm recording this, there are people still missing. Because the way this all played out is that the storm made landfall late Thursday night in Florida as a Category 4 hurricane before making its way through the region. And a Cat 4 is no joke. That means winds of 140 miles per hour. And then in addition to that, you have all the rain and the crazy flooding. Which, I mean, just to give you a few of the many examples so you have an idea how bad it was. Over in Florida, where Helene first made landfall, entire buildings were ripped apart. They're actually making history as the first Cat 4 to hit the region since 1851. And you might think, hey, things are going to be okay because from there, Helene quickly became a Category 1 storm and then a tropical storm. But the winds, they were still around 40 miles per hour and there was just so much rain. Like here in Georgia, like we were on the predicted path and then it ended up going further east and you saw homes getting ripped apart and there was major flooding. I mean, it was so bad. Governor Brian Kemp said, it looks like a tornado went off. It looks like a bomb went off. And in Augusta, we saw things like residents being told that the water would be turned off for between 24 and 48 hours because the storm blocked our ability to pump water. You also had Atlanta, Georgia going viral because of that moment that I showed at the beginning of this story right where you had Fox reporter Bob Van Dillon ultimately rescuing a woman. And this after she apparently drove right into the floodwaters and was screaming for help. And while Bob tried to tell her that 911 was called, they were on their way. She just kept crying for help. And ultimately, Bob said, it's a situation. We will get back to you in a little bit. I'm going to go see if I can help this lady out a little bit more, you guys. I'll be back. With him then pulling the woman out of her car and helping her out of the waters. And actually, as the Fox News anchors pointed out, Van Dillon is apparently a giant at six foot four and the waters were up to his chest. And with that, I got to say two things. The first is that what Van Dillon did, it is brave. He is our BAMF of the day. But then also, too, I have to let you know that what he did was extremely dangerous and emergency personnel do not recommend it. Though that is obviously easier said than done when someone's clearly fearing for their life right in front of you. But again, Van Dillon's a hero for what he did. Then though, moving to South Carolina, the storm left about 760,000 homes and businesses without power as of this morning. And in fact, across the entire Southeast, we're talking about over 2 million. And then the mountain communities in North Carolina, they got extremely flooded. And I mean, about 300 roads were closed. Meaning that the rescue efforts, as well as delivering supplies after the storm passed through, they were extremely hampered. Governor Roy Cooper also emphasizing that the death toll in North Carolina was expected to rise as a ton of people were still missing from the floods and landslides. There was also considerable flooding in Tennessee that caused deaths. And while obviously the focus should be on getting help to the people on the ground here, this whole situation has also now gotten political. Right? Donald Trump has already promised to visit one of the worst hit towns in Georgia, prompting supporters to ask, where is Biden? And while in Georgia, Trump said the governor is doing a good job, but he's having a hard time getting the president on the phone, saying they're being very non-responsive. But that's not what Governor Kemp has said at all. Right? He's actually had the opposite experience and even just said. The president just called me uh, yesterday afternoon. I missed him and called him right back. And he just said, hey, what do you need? And I told him, you know, we, we got what we need. We'll work through the federal process. He, he offered that if there's other things we need, just to call him directly, which I appreciate that. And Biden has already promised to visit affected areas as long as it wouldn't hamper emergency relief efforts. And I think that last part is incredibly important. Right? As great as visiting a town to show support can be, because unless Trump, Biden, or Harris have some magical ability that they've just been hiding behind the scenes where they can like magically heal people and undo things and make the water split, we could end up having is just a random sideshow that actually gets in the way of helping people on the ground. Or someone chucking paper towels into a crowd is not helping at this point. And there's actually way more important things that President Biden can be doing to help, like approving funding for temporary housing and repairs to those in affected counties across North Carolina, and making sure that there will be low cost loans to cover uninsured property for people and businesses. And that is actually just a small taste of what Biden has approved, right? Similar FEMA emergency aid packages were approved by President Biden for Virginia, Florida, Tennessee, South Carolina, and Georgia, while top FEMA officials are on the ground meeting with their state counterparts trying to coordinate relief efforts. And even that, it's just the tip of the iceberg. The Department of Energy is on the ground trying to help stabilize grids, human and health services are sending tons of medical equipment and supplies as well as personnel to hospitals. The Army Corps of Engineers is doing their usual thing to work on dams as well as provide temporary power. Urban Search and Rescue sent 1,302 people, that's 24 teams, to help rescue people trapped in flood areas. And notably, even after rescue efforts finish, there's still a long road to rebuilding, which is expected to be a lot of money. With Moody's Analytics predicting there is between 15 and $25 billion in property damage across the region. And with that, we've seen the Biden and Harris administration vowing to continue support until things are finished. But also there, important to note, a big effort might be delayed considering the fact that heavy rains are expected to continue today throughout the Southeast. And I mean, even new areas like Kentucky, West Virginia, and Virginia are expected to be covered with water. And so for now, we're just left hoping that this doesn't get even worse. And to all those impacted, know you're in our thoughts. Uh, to anyone that, that would like to try and help, I'm going to include some links down below to charities that are trying to help. But ultimately, that is where we are. And if you or anyone you know has been affected by this, I would love 
love if you'd share your story. Honestly, for me personally, this is an especially jarring situation. I actually lived in Asheville, the Buncombe County area for a while. So just seeing the photos and the videos like in this, in this apocalyptic state, horrifying. And then, well, obviously I'm focused on this situation now. I can't help but feel some sort of of dread because, you know, studies have shown that hurricanes are now increasingly likely to become more intense because of climate change. Just crazy, scary times. 